Hello and welcome to Chairside Live. I'm Megan Strong. And I'm Will Schmidt, Registered Dental Assistant here at Gladwell Dental. Welcome into class today. He's taking us back to school. And one more time? Yes, yeah, scan school. In this episode, he's going to show us his scanning procedures for scanning a posterior combination case. We've got a three unit bridge adjacent to a single crown. Well, you said it all, Megan. And mm -hmm. once again, I'm going to teach you how to chart this, how to link the bridge together, how to set it all up, scan it, and set it onto the lab for fabrication. Well, ding, 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 ding. The bell has rung. Time for school. Scan school is back in session. You didn't take the summer off, so neither will we. This episode is going to take you another step further into rounding out your scanning skill set. As always, if you're just tuning in for the first time, take a moment to glance at some of my previous episodes, especially if you are a beginner with the iTero Element Scanner. Let's look at a combination case, a posterior crown for tooth number 28, and a three-unit bridge span from 29 to 31. Time to get started. I'm going to start by entering the specific information for each tooth we're scanning. The missing tooth of the bridge span, in this case number 30, should be selected first and then marked as missing with an edentulous space. I'll move on to the adjacent single unit number 28 next. Uh, this gets marked as a crown, and I'll start to enter all the specific information in the drop-down menu. I always wait to enter this until after the preparations are finished so that I'll have the best opportunity to take a stump shade and to record margin design. Now, I'll go back and start the data entry for the bridge. I can select either of the bridge abutments, uh, here I've chosen number 31, and then mark it as a bridge. Don't worry about selecting the additional bridge retainers yet. Uh, instead, a drop-down menu is going to automatically open and provide you the opportunity to select the remaining retainer. Uh, I'll select tooth number 29 in this case, and my bridge is shown in the view box. Uh, I can now choose each individual unit in the bridge and mark them as abutments or as pontics. To make things easier on myself while entering specific design features, I'll first enter all of tooth number 31's information manually. I include the required information, such as prep design and shade, but also details such as the stump shade. Now, I can select tooth 29, mark it as an abutment, and then select the copy from tooth option at the bottom of the screen. As long as the detailed information for this tooth matches that of a previously entered tooth, I can select the matching unit and the information will automatically be filled in. Now that all specifics are entered for the bridge, I can go back a menu to the main prescription screen. The bridge is clearly charted now with a red bracket line under the units. I'll scroll to the notes section and enter more details about my doctor's treatment requirements. Since I previously selected full contour zirconia as the generic material for fabrication, I can use the notes section to clearly state that the prescribing dentist would like the crown and bridge to both be comprised of Bruxer solid zirconia. This is also the best opportunity to enter Pontic design features. Keep in mind that Glidewell Dental will design a modified ridge lap Pontic as the standard unless specified otherwise. In the meantime, while I've been entering all the prescription information, our doctor has been placing the retraction cords and preparing for the scan process. The double cord technique is being used for these units today. Proper retraction is so crucial because we really need to capture all details of these margins and we don't have the luxury of injecting impression material into the sulcus to make up for any overhang of tissue. Anatomical copper caps are also placed after the cords are packed. The patient is asked to bite together, and the caps are left for a period of about five minutes. I can now move on to the scanning phase of this appointment. I'm going to go ahead and remove these copper caps. Uh, this leaves me still with two cords packed into each sulcus. Just like my previous multi-unit scanning episode, each unit must be scanned individually, so I have to be very detail-oriented with these next steps. At this moment, the maintenance of tissue retraction is the highest priority. I am going to remove the top cord from number 31 only. Uh, I'll also keep the tongue retracted and the tooth free of contaminants. I've selected tooth number 31 on the chart. The first scan is meant to acquire all of the details of the preparation of tooth number 31 only. This scan should be completed in roughly 5 to 10 seconds if possible. I'm not worried about capturing any other details except for number 31 exclusively at this point. Once I've satisfied that I've acquired the proper data, I'll give it a quick look to confirm and then press and hold on the green occlusal marker to move it to the center of the occlusal position on the preparation. Moving on, I'm going to perform these same steps for the next tooth, number 29. I'll once again remove the top cord only. 
I took a second look, and I'm glad I did, because I noticed that the top chord of 28 was most likely going to interfere with the scan of 29. So, I removed that as well. I try to leave all chords in place until the preparation scan starts, unless a situation like this happens. Now that I'm ready, I'll select number 29 on the chart, and once again perform a 5 second scan of this preparation's details only. Review it once completed, and move the incisal locator dot as a final step. I move right into the prep scan of 28, since the top chord had to be removed. Once again make sure to move the incisal locator dot to its best position before continuing. At this point, I'll go ahead and remove the remaining retraction chords. I do want to mention that the removal of only the top chord during the scan process is just a guideline. If sulcular bleeding is negligible, or you are able to acquire a better scan with no chords left in place, then definitely take both out. I do, however, want to stress that it is important to perform cord removal on a tooth-by-tooth -tooth basis. Well, I've taken the lip retractor out of the mouth at this point. I mentioned in a past tutorial that I prefer to perform the full arch scan portion with no distractions, such as retractors or mouth mirrors, if I can help it. And this situation isn't any different. I've already selected the lower arch on the chart, and I'll begin with the contralateral side. If you're a veteran of these scan school videos, then the pathway of the wand should already be second nature to you. More importantly, during this scan, I want to point out a technique to consider. The chart to the left uses white coloring for the teeth that the Itero suggests to be scanned and shows the teeth that aren't required in gray. As you can see, the Itero is suggesting a quadrant scan only for this treatment. However, Similar to full arch physical impressions that have prepared teeth with no posterior stop, this scan should be acquired as a full arch rather than the suggested quadrant in order to prevent any bite collapse misinformation, especially if a model is requested to be printed and articulated. This is the sole reason why I started on the unprepared side and moved on to the working quadrant. Scanning a full arch when only a quadrant is indicated will not adversely affect the Itero's ability to process this model. Remember, the unit will only suggest best practices. It is up to your dentist to determine how complete the scan should be recorded and then pass that instruction to you before proceeding. If the instruction is vague, it never hurts to ask. Switching to the opposite arch now, and as a refresher of the wand pathways, I'll go into just a little more detail here. Always starting distal to the most posterior tooth in the arch, and on either side that you feel most comfortable, scan the occlusal surfaces. Angle slightly lingual on the anterior, and then reach the same distal destination on the contralateral side of the arch. If you are proficient enough to continue the scan by rotating to the lingual, then that's perfectly acceptable to continue without stopping. The interproximal data can be reached by tilting the wand upwards towards the ceiling on the maxillary arch, or downwards towards the patient's chest for the mandibular arch, and then rocking laterally from side to side. Once the full arch lingual data has been acquired, you can either stop the scan and review, or, as I'm doing here, continue to the buckle surface if you feel comfortable. Grab the interproximal buckle data by rocking the tail of the wand up and down as it travels to the midline, where the scan can be stopped. Perform the same process from the distal occlusal of the contralateral side. Move towards the buckle surface, travel to the midline, and then stop when the buckle scan meets the previously acquired data. Finally, I've selected the bite registration option on the chart. I'll place the wand in the opposite vestibule from the prepared side and ask the patient to bite in centric occlusion. Start posterior and move the wand in an S or a zigzag motion towards the anterior until the arches mesh together. The scan can be stopped after the mesh and then the process is repeated on the contralateral side. It is important, especially in this situation, to capture the bite registration bilaterally on every full arch scan. After ensuring that all scans have been completed and meshed properly, select the view icon to allow the unit to clean up the scans and present them in a high definition format. From here, you can view the occlusal surfaces on a color graded map. These clearances are set to the final restoration material that's been chosen for this particular case. As always, the occlusal color map can also be turned off and the scan can be viewed in its post-processed, high-definition state exclusively. When you are finished, give the model one last review, and then press the envelope icon to send this case to the lab for final fabrication. 
Thank you so much, Will. Professor Will, always at your service. It's so painful. Um, so on behalf of everyone here at Glybald Dental, thank you so much for watching. We'll meet you right back here next time.